I want to show you how to use the new touch library that I created for the ESP32. So I have a touch pen and another touch pen and a third all the way up to another one and so you can kind of see the speed is running really slow on that touch pen medium all the way up to really fast on that one so let me show you how this is working uh, and how you use the touch pen uh, or sorry the touch library for ESP32 Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is that when you init the touch library, you do this touch.create process. And I'm passing in five pads, uh, GP, uh, sorry, pad two through six. The GPIO that it's associated with is in the comments. Uh, and then I'm passing no callback because this is just going to be a polling test. So let me go ahead and upload and run that. And you'll see that the raw values that come back are 484, 667, 682. Now that null is just because of the way Lua does the arrays. When you create an array in, in your callback, or sorry, in your um, read, you get back a raw value. Um, and so it just uh, does a one-based index as we've all gotten used to. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch some of these. And I'll rerun the uh, read method. Okay, so I reran the read method and notice, for instance, that last value is 242 and these values are 817. I was only touching like these three sensors. Uh, you can see 477 is pretty close to the 44. So that's how you tell the delta. And the thing is you really do have to configure it depending on the size of your touch pins. Uh, and I was actually physically touching the copper. I'm trying to get it to work where I can touch uh, on the outside of the plastic. In fact, I'll, I'll run that. So in this, I was just touching the outside of the plastic. So you can see that 747, for instance, was the value touching on the outside of the plastic. 812 is when you're not touching. 578 versus 649. So you don't get a huge delta when you have a larger substrate to go through. But I've been kind of playing with 10% values, uh, and it does seem to work pretty well. But now let me show you a, a more advanced example. Okay, in this example, I'm actually running with a filter. So notice that there's a new uh, item I'm passing in here, which is filter milliseconds. I have it set really high. I still don't know how well the millisecond value matters here. But let's go ahead and run this. And now, oh, cannot open touch test pads filter, I'll see. Okay, I fixed that little issue. Let's go ahead and uh, upload this. So I'm uploading the code. And now I'm actually getting back a raw and a filter value. Uh, not that much different, actually. Um, so in fact, let's go ahead and run read again. And you can see like that 739 to that 734 is a little different. I haven't seen much value out of the filter, but I imagine once there's a lot of electrical noise going on in the system, you could see more difference. And in my kind of prototype mode, I don't have a lot of electrical noise going. Uh, so you do have that available when you specify filter milliseconds. It kind of turns that feature on. So let me show you another example. Okay, so in this example, I'm still I'm going to show you uh, how to do a touch untouch event. Uh, so touch untouch, and same create method, but this time I am specifying a callback, and it'll call on touch. So that's this method, and you get a callback roughly every eight milliseconds when you're touching. Now interrupt init at start is set to false, and so the the key there is that you run your config at the beginning, and I'm going to set to 10% of the red value of the untouched state. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Oh, the key here is the trigger above and the trigger below. So with trigger above and trigger below, what you're doing is the first time you get the callback, you now swap the trigger. It starts as trigger below, and you put the number uh, 
or you swap it to trigger above, so you kind of get a callback. You only you get a very small amount of callbacks. The thing is, this only works with one button because the trigger mode is global for the entire touch sensor. It's not per pad. So that is one downside, um, but it's pretty sweet. So let me go ahead and show you what's gonna how it's gonna run. So we're running the code and we will get our initial um, configuration. So the threshold is set to 717. The pad is at 796 in a base state. Now it just got a touch and I didn't touch anything, so it's already a bad sign, but I'm gonna go ahead and touch here. And I got a touch event and then I let go and I got an untouch. So really clean code. Uh, let me go ahead just to prove how this is working, clear that and I will touch, got touch, and I'm not getting any callbacks right now, and then I got my last callback, I've got on touch. So it puts a very light load on your CPU to use this trigger above and trigger below approach. Let me show you another approach with a timer so that you can get this to work with multiple paths. All right, in this example, I'm doing a touch on touch using a timer. So same uh, approach as last time where I'm specifying a callback of on touch, interrupt init at start is set to false, so it does its config, it uses the 10% value. And then the on touch, you start a timer, and every callback you stop and start the timer. And that really just kind of resets it. So if you're gonna get this callback every eight milliseconds or so, the final timer is set to about 100 milliseconds and you get your untouched. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So it should configure it to the 10% value. So turned on touch pad interrupt. Uh, the trigger's at 737, the baseline's at 818. So let's go ahead and touch this. We got our touch event. Now I'm gonna let go and we got our untouch. We'll try it again, touch, untouch. So working pretty well with that timer timeout. And what you could do is then analyze that pads value to see which pads are being touched and kind of use different techniques for like sliders. All right, here's an example of a PCB touch sensor. And this example code that I'm about to run is in the module uh, Lua examples. So I'm gonna run touch eight pads show test list and this is hooked to the ESP32 all eight pads are connected right here and I'm going to start touching and as I move my finger around you're getting updated which pad is being touched and I had these overlap so that you're actually getting two pads touched or one pad you can kind of see you get sort of a combo and so as you move around or you move this way, you can kind of detect the direction. And then uh, the idea here is that you're actually uh, managing a stepper motor and speeding it up, moving it forward faster or moving it backwards faster. Okay, and so now when you kind of combine all that, you get techniques where you could drive stepper motors at different speeds, depending on which pad is being touched using the new ESP32 Lua Node MCU touch module uh, that I wrote for the firmware.